said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We can all say with confidence that Jesus is the rock of life and he is our God in whom we trust. God bless you, Gifted Church Podcast listener. We believe that your elevation will come through your ear gate because faith that elevates comes by hearing the word of God. With an open heart and in a mood of expectancy, let's get into the word with Pastor Kwame. Praise be to God with hang on this Friday. We are so grateful for his goodness and his mercies. It is the Lord who has brought us through the week. It is the Lord that we look unto. And 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 one thing about God is his children have what we call daily provision. The scripture says now when you pray, you have to say, Give us this day our daily bread. So we are so confident. We are so we are so sure of this fact that God is with us. God is able to lead us, walk with us, and kind of take us through entire day with him at the center of it all and so as always i take time to bless your weekend may your weekend be blessed may god favor you may god be kind unto you and may god show you favor as you enter into the week and i always challenge you to rest and rest in god relax in god and wait for his direction the scripture says that lay not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's a delight and a joy to always bring the, you the word of God because I believe and I'm convinced that there's power in the word. Amen. Amen. Um, I want to go on the light side on this Friday. I want to just have a little conversation with you about how you are doing emotionally and also kind of challenge you to take care of yourself emotionally and to um not just take of yourself but understand what emotional wellness can do as you begin to press in god amen amen so let me just read from um the letter from apostle peter i'm reading from first peter chapter 3 verse 4 and uh that's going to be the, the focus of um, the, the podcast today. In in First Peter chapter 3, verse 4, Peter says now, The ageless beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is of the greatest value in God's sight. The ageless beauty of gentle and quiet spirit, which is of the greatest value in God's sight. I want to talk to you a little bit about the power of spiritual beauty. The power of spiritual beauty. Amen. Um, so First Peter is actually a, an instructive book. First Peter is a, is a very strong book that is not um, kind of going circles. When when Paul writes, he will he would indulge in theology a lot so by the time he's giving instructions he has laid a strong theological foundation but when peter writes he goes straight to the point and so in here peter is actually dealing with marriage and so he made mention of a very profound truth that i want to kind of pull out of that marriage seminar so to speak and talk to you about the power of spiritual beauty um so um he was comparing and, and kind of instructing um the wife in in particular to begin to exercise spiritual beauty and, and to attract god in such an unusual way and so i want to use that to um now this podcast is talking about what is happening on your inside? Uh, I mean, so we, I, I, I want to talk about how you are doing on the inside, like a pastoral care kind of message. I want to deal with what is going on on your inside, and 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 the necessity of it. And so that is where we are going. It has, I'm not dealing with um, your external breakthrough. I'm not dealing with your external elevation. I'm not dealing with your finances. I'm dealing with the you on the inside. And I'm going to kind of approach it for you to understand that that part of you must be beautified. And there is a way you add beauty to your internal being and, 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 and I have to talk a little bit about beauty so you can understand how significant it is to apply beauty to your inside. Um, beauty is like money. It has received a lot of negative connotation. Um, when somebody is beautiful, um, 
everybody likes it, but they pretend they don't. And and there is this sense of um, uh, attacking beautiful girls, uh, attacking handsome guys, attacking people that are good looking. And as, uh, is, there is this kind of um, even, how do I call it? There is this kind of stereotype that if you are beautiful, it means you don't have character, which is not true at all. The, 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 the actual purpose of beauty is for attraction. Don't forget that the purpose of beauty is for attraction. And so physical beauty create physical attraction. So obviously spiritual beauty create spiritual attraction. That's why in the same verse, you see ageless beauty and value in the sight of God. Ageless beauty and value in the sight of God. So I want to kind of give you a little bit of what it takes to maintain the ageless beauty which is attractive to God. So it means that just as physical beauty attracts men to you, just as physical beauty attracts women to you, spiritual beauty attracts gods to you. And I'm not talking about fruit of the spirit. I'm not talking about character here. This is not about character. I'm talking about how to develop spiritual beauty. And so that's what I want to engage with you today. And you're going to see practically that it is essential that you engage in developing your spiritual beauty. And he, he, he tied that to the, the, the responsibility of the woman, but it's not a woman thing. It's, an, it's critical that you do that. And so let me talk about it a little bit. Now, um, he made mention of two elements that are c- composes the spiritual beauty of a person. He uses the word gentle and quiet spirit, but it, it's not really, those two words don't capture the essence of it because it, he's dealing with something which is not tangible. So he has to kind of use a, a word that um, is close enough. When you get deep into the, the study of the word, he's talking about, um, so I'm going to teach and dissect a little bit on the keyword gentle and the quiet spirit because those are the two things that create that inner uh, beauty. And so I want you to pay attention that when he says um, the ageless beauty of a gentle spirit, it's not gentle as in um, somebody who's a gentle man or a gentle person. This gentle has to do with, uh, fortunately, I have to kind of go outside the faith and come back. Um, when you practice yoga, there is this um, kind of uh, place you want to internally align yourself. There is this place you want to go and 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 focus. And that place that people who practice yoga are trying to attain, it has that little bit of that in the word gentle talking about where you set your inner inner levels to zero and you are in a very um calm state hallelujah and so the things that attack your calmness some of you literally you don't know how to relax you have allowed life to enter into you so much that you don't know how to really relax and if you don't learn to relax you can develop inner beauty and when when you so so here's what uh actually peter is saying he's saying that now uh, when you have this gentle so Let me tackle it this way. So I'm going to talk about gentle spirit and a quiet spirit. And those two elements now will capture the essence of inner beauty. So dealing with gentle spirit, it has to, it has to connect you to a place where you know how to um, relax. You know how to um, not be agitated. Yes, I think I got the word not to be anxious, not to live a life of agitation. Do you understand that? It's very important that you don't live a fearful life. So it's a state of um, inner tranquility that that speaks of a person that is convinced within that you are all right in the hands of God. A person that is convinced within. And it speaks of um, gentleness that defiles physical um, retaliation. In other words, anybody that's operating in this ageless beauty, they don't struggle because he was talking about the woman submitting to the man. And the woman is submitting to the man, not because of external fear that the man is stronger, but the woman is submitting because of this inner gentleness that she has already. Do you follow? 
um i don't know but I, I i i feel like sharing this with you which is um i've never played golf before but i feel this might work there is a place within you those let me say it like this um every sport whether it's basketball whether it's golf that you have to actually gauge and throw a ball into a particular place do you know that they don't throw the ball from their hands but they throw it from their inside there is a, a way you align your internal self when the ball leave your hand it will go into the net you understand that is why anybody that takes the ball just throw it anywhere but there's a way you can align your physical being and internally have your core line straight out and when you're internally straight it means that the ball is going by the direction of the vector that is leaving your inside so it's not it has to do with your hands but it also has to do with the way you have kind of kind of gather all the energy on your inside and you have made it so straight so it's going in that direction the same way with golf and all of that so in the same way when internally you are able to kind of bring yourself to that level of peaceness you understand it it means that irritation on the external level will not irritate you let me go straight to the point and stop all this philosophy the point i'm trying to say is that if you let people get on your nerves so easily you don't have inner beauty that's all i'm trying to say and i'm going circles like that if you are going to be inner beauty it means that people can irritate you easily if you're going to develop inner beauty it means that insult doesn't um it doesn't affect you that easily if you're going to develop inner beauty it means that what people do doesn't affect. some of you I, I want to tell you even somebody's whatsapp status destroy your inner beauty there is so much i don't know whether it's jealousy or you think you are being late in life but you got to keep your inner beauty so strong that things you see online doesn't destroy your inner beauty. Because as soon as your inside gets sour, you are destroying your inner beauty. As soon as this kind of, this sense, so, so let me tell you, if it's going to cause you to destroy your inner beauty, don't look at it. Because the point is that when you are internally, when you are spiritually beautiful and God is going around, he's attracted to you. Do you follow? So, keep your gentle spirit, keep that kind of sense of nothing is bothering me, nothing is making me, you know. Because some of us, there's something we call poker face. You can keep a straight face where nobody knows that you are actually um, anxious. Nobody knows that you are actually um, feeling uncomfortable about something. Now nobody knows that you are even negative about something and your face still looks good. And when your face looks good but your heart is not looking good, you are destroying your inner beauty. Because that is what attracts God. You understand that? So that's the first point. A gentle spirit is a spirit that is not controlled by external things. Amen. So you have to guard that. You have to keep that. Practice that tranquility. God help me. God help me. God help me. Practice that gentility. Practice that thing that makes you feel inwardly all right the second one has to do with the quiet spirit and the quiet spirit is also not just um a, a spirit that's not talking a quiet spirit has to do with um a quiet spirit has to do with uh the the sense of um how do i put it the sense of you not um you not living in uh Spirit of God, help me. You're not living in, not just fear, but you're not living in contention. Amen. You're not living in a sense of uh, grudging. You're not living with any unforgiveness or things that begin to disturb your spirit. Amen. So, anger of any kind, uh, irritation of any kind, and all of that. So, I'm dealing with 
a spiritual thing, but I'm tackling it from the emotional point of view because when those things begin to disturb your internal self, then you are dealing with a, a, a beauty which is not correct. And I want you to labor to be beautiful on your spiritual uh, uh, faculty because it says now, which is a greatest value in God's sight. I don't know what God used it for, but I said it's the greatest value in God's sight when you don't allow things to irritate you, when you don't allow people to get under your skin, when you don't allow those things, when, you, oh God help me, when you are able to freely cast things out, when you're able to freely let things go, when you're able to freely just, just, just let it dissipate and leave your system. Amen. You can have a a, 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 a very uh, pretty spiritual beauty if you are angry about three people. You can have a beautiful spirit if you are irritated about two people. You understand that? So to summarize everything, let me give you three things. Whoever in your life that makes you get upset you have to thank God for that person, but you have to learn how to adjust yourself as quickly as possible. I think it's as easy as physical beauty. If you want to look pretty, something sometimes happens. Some things happen where you have to check yourself and see whether you look good or not. And if you don't look good, you just kind of fix yourself a little bit and you, you try to look attractive again. In the same way, when something negative happens to you, when a negative energy is around you, when something awful is happening to you, you don't have to absorb it because when you absorb negativity, anger, when you absorb this irritation, you are not, in, you are not spiritually beautiful. And, and, and at that moment, you can't attract any beauty. Or you, your beauty cannot attract anything from God. Amen. So it is important that you check yourself. And I got to touch on this. If you have a very bad mood swing, you are dealing with a very ugly spiritual state. Refuse to be in a bad mood. Refuse to be in a, a moody state. I, 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 you could attack me from any angle. You say, Pastor, it's hormonal. It's whatever now. My point is that fight to be in a good spirit. Fight to be in a good spirit. There's no hormone that is stronger than the Holy Spirit. There is no agitation stronger than the Holy Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to beautify your inside and stand strong and attract heaven. Look pretty on the inside. And attract heaven. A deeper sense of gentle and quiet spirit. That nothing on the outside can disturb you. Father, we thank you today. We pursue spiritual beauty with all our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen.